How to put a shine on your streamliners on this episode of Toy Train Tips and Tricks. And hello again, this is Mike with another episode of Toy Train Tips and Tricks. And I have a couple of Lionel's Aluminum Streamline Passenger Cars. This is from the Super Speedliner set of 1952. And these cars were part of the same set. And our goal today is to make this car uh, look as nice and shiny as this car. When Lionel first cataloged the classic 2333 F3 diesels in 1948, the EMD diesels led freight trains only, as Lionel's only existing streamlined passenger cars, the 2400 series, were too small for the scale dimension diesels, and Madison or Irvington style heavyweight cars looked too old behind these shiny new locomotives. Luckily for operators, a new line of aluminum streamlined cars was released in late 1948 that looked great behind the F3 diesels and mimicked the stainless steel streamlined bud cars that were common on trains of the era. Unfortunately for Lionel, these cars were not theirs, but were instead made by AMT, alternately known as Auburn models or American models through the years. This upstart Indiana firm had caught Lionel napping, and not for the last time, and filled the gap in the Lionel line with well-proportioned and detailed cars that are coveted by collectors today. It was not until 1952 that Lionel answered the AMT challenge with the classic Santa Fe Super Speedliner set. First led by a pair of number 2343 diesels, and later by 2353 F3s, this four-car set became a Lionel classic. Behind the pair of F3s were two Pullman cars, the number 2533 Silver Cloud and 2534 Silver Bluff, plus a number 2532 Silver Range Dome car, or Astrodome as it was called in the early boxes, and the number 2531 Silver Range Observation car. The silver names of the cars recall the similar names given to streamlined cars on the Burlington route for service on the California Zephyr and other prestigious trains. The Super Speedliner set retailed for $89.50 in 1952, which would be more than $1,000 in 2023 values. A note of warning, when these cars originally left the Lionel factory, the aluminum was in what is known as mill finish. That means these cars were not polished and shiny when they were factory new. So if you have a set of cars with a more flat gray finish and you're concerned with keeping them as mint or light new, then do not polish these cars. The first part of the process is we're going to disassemble the car so that we can get it all the parts and not have to worry about breaking anything. And uh, the first step, and uh, this comes in handy if you ever need to replace a light bulb, you don't have to take the car completely apart. So first we're going to just remove this one screw here and this actually brilliant Lionel engineering. Each of these trucks with the lights is all one self-contained unit with the light bulb and everything. So there's no additional wiring to worry about in the car. Actually, you can change the light bulb just by pulling the plug that way. Uh, but if you need to get in here, just one screw and the whole truck assembly comes off Pretty nifty. Now I'm going to take this screw and there's a little bit of corrosion there. So I'm going to drop it here in this cap and uh, soak it in a little bit of WD-40 until we're done. Let's do the same thing on the other side. There are many variations in these cars, particularly in 1952 production, including differences in the boxes, how the nameplates are attached, whether it's small screws, large screws, rivets, or glue and even how the wiring for the interior lighting is attached. It is not uncommon for mismatched cars to appear in the same set, even in original boxed versions. So your particular cars may be slightly different from my early 1952 cars. Oh, and that one, the bracket came off. Okay. That bracket helps center the truck do the same thing with the screw put it in our little container and i'm going to need this later and we'll set this all aside i want to avoid uh doing anything with these plastic pieces 
Anyway, so I'm going to take these out apart and get them out of the way. And for that, there are two screws on either end. That's one. Okay. And that allows me to just pull and wiggle this plastic piece out of our aluminum shell. Sometimes, there we go. And there we go, that's the end. And I'll take that and clean the gunk out of that before I put it back together. All right, and again, I'm just gonna wiggle the vestibule end here until it pops out of our aluminum shell. Carefully. Wiggle it. And there we go. The next subassembly. And again, there's some crud and gunk, and I'll clean that all up before I put everything back together. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and take my window channels out, and you can see there's gunk on those. There's one. And there's one. Hey, now I could leave the base in place and clean this, but I've got some surface rust here and there's some I'm sure on the other side as well. So I'm going to go ahead and take the base plate out and I kind of take care of this rust before I put everything back together. So I'm going to go ahead and disassemble all of this. Now, sometimes they just slide right out. Other times you need to uh, encourage them a little bit, pulling the uh, aluminum slightly there we go ah, as we pull this out ah. and let's see what this side was like actually it's in better shape than i thought it was going to be i don't see any rust at all on that side it's all on that side okay well still i'll set this aside and i'll take care of the sur surface rust before i reassemble the car so now we have our aluminum shell now, when i first received these these were pretty filthy you could tell they had been stored uh, for a very long time improperly and all of the cars and the uh, the the f3 locomotive were just covered in a a kind of a gray powdery mildew it was like moon dust covering everything so i had already wiped everything down with my damp cloth to get all of that on but still you see how the aluminum is uh not as shiny as our other example here and uh, so we are going to clean that up using mother's mag and aluminum polish this is great stuff works great on these cars you can find this at box stores at auto parts stores uh, or online i think i got this at walmart because i just happened to be shopping in walmart and went oh you know what i need today uh so i picked this up for that and it works great as you're going to see lionel made some later streamlined cars with anodized aluminum the method shown here will not work on these cars and may in fact damage the finish. And if you're not certain about your cars, try the method on a very inconspicuous area such as inside the car first. So with your mother's cleaner here, you're going to need a rag microfiber or a cotton uh, that you're going to use to apply the product to the aluminum. And then you're going to want to have several, also again, microfiber or cotton gloves to um to take the material off when it uh, when it oxidizes when it gets the oxide so i've got three to clean it off and i hope that's going to be enough because this stuff does uh it does make quite a mess now these tiles are not going to be ruined forever you know just run through the wash cycle and they're perfectly fine but you know don't use your wife's good monogram tiles from your wedding anniversary or anything <laughs> like that for this but any otherwise you know any any old towel will do so we're going to uh, take my clean cloth and we're going to dip some in. It doesn't take a lot. And we're just going to start. I like starting on the roof. And we start rubbing it in. And you want to work it. You see how it's starting to turn black here in this corner? That's good. That's what you want. You want to work it in till it starts turning black. And that's pulling that oxide off of our aluminum you want to work that in as much as you can
and then reapply as necessary. Again, it starts getting a little too thin. You can add more, not too much at a time. And again, work it in until it starts turning black and just keep working, keep working. Now, one thing you don't want to do, you don't want to leave it on there so long that it dries. But what I found working on a, a piece this size that shouldn't be a problem. I haven't found any problems with the nameplates. Uh, you may be tempted to take them off. For me, those little connectors are so small, I don't think I would be able to see to get them back on, so I'm just leaving them on. And uh, with the other cars that I've done, it hasn't caused any damage that I've noticed. And then you can use a cotton swab to work really close in the details if you can get your towel in there. Okay, so now I've treated my entire roof line and so now before I go on, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take a dry towel and take this off. And it'll kind of buff as I clean. Keep working clean areas of the cloth as you go. To make sure you're getting the product off of where you just applied it. Okay, and so compare the shininess here of the roof to the sides, and you can, you can see the demarcation line there where I got shiny and we have our dull. So now I'm going to pick a side and uh, work on the side. Okay, so let's remove. Let's use a cotton swab to get in right here next to the nameplates. And clean up any that went through the windows, the inside, because we don't want to get that on our window inserts. Okay, so let's compare this side to this side. <laughs> Pretty stark difference. Okay, so we're going to continue on on this side. Okay. All right, let's start drying it off. All right, and now it's a silver buff and not a dusty gray buff. Okay, now before reassembly, uh, let's start with the frame. And I've got one of my generic wet wipes. And uh, so I'm just going to wipe over where this active rust is. You can see it. The wet wipe is just, just has just enough texture to take that active rust right off of there. Check the other side. The other side looked good. Yeah, the other side was clean. This was by far the best condition of all of the cars. And then, um, just to give them a little bit of protection so that the rust doesn't come back, I'm going to take my same dirty wet wipe, and I'm just going to shoot some WD-40 on it. Just go back and rub everything. That WD-40 will kind of be a surface protection to prevent that oxidation I'm coming back at least for a while. And now I'm going to do pretty much the same thing with each of the truck assemblies. And especially in these places here where you see this active rust. I'll wipe in there. Get that surface rust right off of there. All right. And repeat the process. Shoot some WD-40 on here. And uh, give everything a quick coat of protection. I'm not going to do anything to the light bulbs on these because they all work. These are the standard, pretty much uh, BA9 bayonet bulbs. That's the size. So if you wanted to replace them with either original or uh, LEDs, that's the size. Pretty much the same as you find on 
uh, a lot of Lionel cabooses. Looks like it's a GE number 433. The original markings on there from 1952 or so. My centering spring. And uh, let's use this one as a guide. So you see what happens here is this goes down in here. And then this. Use up the either side here. Oh, we go like so. One side goes there. One side goes there. And that piece in the middle. And that way the coupler returns to center after going around a curve. I also want to do my window inserts. And again, I'm just going to use my generic wet wipes to uh, clean these off. Yeah, these are from the 50s. So a lot of people smoked back then. So there's probably nicotine stains and such on here. Give them a little bit of yellow cast. So. And then it looks like there's some old adhesive here. Bit of gunk there. Okay. And we got our wind inserts clean. Set those aside. Okay. So the, uh, this just slides back in. Now make sure you've got it the right way where you can read the writing. Um, as far as top and bottom, doesn't really matter left or right. And just slide it back into its channel there in the aluminum. And boom. Okay. Next, take a truck assembly. And this little tab goes right underneath there. Tricky part is getting that there in the light bulb. Okay. And then all we need to do is secure it in place with our screw. This is not a magnetic screwdriver, so I'm using a little piece of Gorilla Glue wall putty, poster putty, uh, to get the screw started. That is secure. Other side. Okay. Okay, so to put the window inserts back in, again, they go right back in the channel. Put the one... The window with the car number goes next to the big vestibule end on each car on each side. So now get it started, find the channel and push it in there. And if it all works out, you should see the car number right there and all of the people should be in their appropriate spots. I had some more on there. Okay. Flip it over and here's my vestibule end. Here's my car number. Find the slot. Bingo. Everything lines up. So now, it's just going just like I took it off. Put it back on. We're just going to line it up and wiggle. And get everything lined up in place. Now, I'm not going to screw it in yet because there's a little bit of wiggle room here with the frame, and I want to make sure both ends are firmly secured before I screw either one of them in. Yeah. Because if I have the frame too far to one side or the other, the screw holes won't line up. There we go. Push it back into place. Get it in there firmly. Boom. And my screw holes should line up. There we go. It's one. Two. I lied about the last step. Uh, while I've got it here, I'm going to go ahead and lubricate my wheels. I'm using uh, Excel light. And on each truck, I'm going to hit inside and outside of each wheel on the axle to help these post-war trucks rotate well, and then one drop on each side of the roller pickup. And there we go, a nice shiny silver streamliner. Let's put it with its brethren on the layout and see what we've got. My version of the Super Speedliner is a mishmash of various items. While my four cars share the common traits of early 1952 production, the F3 dummy that came with them is a number 2353, which was not produced until 1953. 
My set did not include a powered unit. I browsed various websites in vain for several weeks, looking for a twin-motored Santa Fe F3 in decent shape that was within my budget. I thought about adding a Santa Fe F3 shell to a cheaper single-motor MPC-era F3, but realized that a single-motored unit would not be able to pull this heavy metal train. Just when I was about to give up, the Menards Beta 4.5 Santa Fe FP7 was released, and I was lucky enough to get one, completing my version of the Super Speedliner set. 1952 meet 2023. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed making it, and maybe you were inspired to put a little shine on your post-war Lionel cars. If so, please spread the word to your friends and neighbors, and to the almighty YouTube algorithm by giving us a like, a share, subscribe, and leave a comment about your favorite Lionel passenger cars. Also, don't forget to visit the video description for links to some of the products and trains mentioned in this video. So keep the trains shiny and running, and we'll see you next time on Toy Train Tips and Tricks.